Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal and this is the latest news update. The international games are finally over, none of our players got injured or anything like that, so great time to be an Arsenal fan once again. We are getting closer and closer to the Man City game, it's going to be a big one. A couple of their players were injured um, while playing for England, but I'm sure they'll be back for the uh, weekend's game. We'll be talking about the preview for that tomorrow, so look out for that one. Now, today there's still a lot of news that has come out, including some rumors about Martinelli potentially missing the whole season. <laughs> Bro, I read that I almost got a panic attack. But we have good news in terms of that. And um, also the rest of the injuries that we had um, just before the international break or the players who didn't um, go for the international um, games. We'll be talking about that one in terms of updates. And also um, Julian Timber, when is he going to make it back? Jorginho's contract is close to expiring. What are our plans with that? One? And also the latest transfer news in terms of the search for a winger and a striker. So let's get to it with... Um, the, the injury front, because uh, the Man City game is getting closer and closer, and this is what um, more Arsenal had to say today. The only real question mark for Sunday is Martinelli. He has a chance to make the squad, but maybe on the bench. Gabriel and, and Saka are expected to be available. Now, that is absolutely good news, man. Like yesterday, uh, we didn't have any idea of which players are going to be back or not, uh, but I did say I'm expecting Saka to be like, you know, 85% um, fit for this game. Not, um, not in terms of his fitness, but I said I'm 85%. Percent, I'm sure that he will make it for this game. Usually picks up injuries and then ends up making it the next game anyway. And also that two week break was basically precautionary. He's been carrying an injury, but he should be back for the um, Man City game. For Gabriel, it was also pre precautionary. I was, um, I don't think he was seriously injured. Like uh, he's not been like carrying an injury like Ben White or Saka, but he did get an knock when he played FC Porto. So I was hoping that um, he doesn't get to miss this Man City game because this is a guy we need to play up against Haaland next to Saliba. And um, looks like he, he is going to make it. I think I gave him like a 70% chance yesterday. Now, the one that I said that was 50-50 was the Martinelli one because... Um, He's been out now for more than a month since he played Sheffield United and um, he was stepped on, like he had a gash on his foot. So he was walking on crutches for like a couple of weeks or something. So you never know um, how long he's going to be out for. Recently, he's been watching the Brazil game. He's been out and about taking pictures with fans here and there um, during the international break. And he looked good. He was walking fine and he looked good. So um, that kind of tells me he's um, going to be back soon. Now, the question was, is he going to make the Man City game? Well, according to Mo Arsenal, he says that he could make the bench for the Man City game, which would be a huge boost for us because um, we know how good Martinelli is. The last time he beat Man City um, back in, I think it was October, he's the one who came off the bench and scored. So listen, if you have him on the bench again, an option like that to call him off the bench, um, to, to use from the bench, that would be great for us. This is a player that you don't want to miss too many games. I think he's already missed like... um. This is his second injury this season. I'm sure he missed like one month. I remember he didn't play like, um, was he injured against Everton? I think he got injured against Everton last year, like after the international break. He scored against Everton, the goal got disallowed, and then he went um, out for like a month or something and we missed him. And then I think he came back against Man City. I think that was um, the, the the schedule for, for Martinelli, how everything went down. So... Happy to, uh, to announce that um, he should be back for that game. Um, I don't think he's going to start. Um, it would be very surprising. A welcome sight if he ends up starting, but um, I'd be happy with having him off the bench. Um, Trossard as well, as I said yesterday, Trossard has played well against Man City a couple of times. We've played them. He scored against Man City at Wembley in the Community Shield. And last season when he lost 1-0 um, to Man City in the FA Cup, Trossard was probably our best player in that game. So he's already had two solid performances against Man City. I don't have a problem with him um, starting in this particular game. The other option is to play Jesus on the left side. Um, that could also work because Jesus played really well against Man City last time um, at the Emirates Stadium. Now, that's the good news um, in terms of um, the injuries. Now, we had rumors about Martinelli potentially um, missing the entire season. You have to look at uh, both sides. And these were the rumors, um, according to reports. Rumors had suggested that Gabriel Martinelli could be out for the season due to his injury. But this are understood to be wide off the mark. So that's not true. If he came across this news anywhere today or yesterday, that's not accurate at all. He's not going to miss the whole season. Like the first time I read that, I was like, surely not. He's, he's looked very good the last couple of weeks and, you know, in terms of recovering from the injury, surely nothing like, you know, the only thing that might have happened is, you know, getting an infection on the gash or anything like that. And I'm sure that the chances of that happening is very rare, like with the doctors they have. I'm sure they get taken care of very, very well um, um, for such kind of stuff now not to happen. So 
those are rumors. Uh, McNeely will definitely be back very, very soon. He could be back for the Man City game on the bench, not starting. If he ends up starting, great. Um, but by the time we play Luton on the, I think it was on the Wednesday, he's definitely going to be there. So um, really, really happy. As I said yesterday, I'm really happy the international break came up. These days, I want the international break to be two or three, four weeks. Because um, if Martinelli, um, if we didn't have the international break, Martinelli would have missed the game against Man City, the game against Luton, potentially the game against Bayern Munich. So the international break came at the right time. So happy for those players. We could have all three back. I'm expecting Man City to have De Bruyne there, Walker there. Stones might not play, but I'm expecting him to be there as well. And it's going to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's a big, big game for us. If we don't lose that game, if we end up winning that game, then you're in, you're, you're in business, like you're really talking. If you end up not losing that game, you're still in business, um, but there'll still be nine tough games to go, and you'll still need to win like eight of them. So um, it's not easy. If you beat Man City, you take out one of the um, one of the strong contenders. No, not, not completely take them out, but... Um, a huge blow for them and basically you're going to be a few points ahead of them um next to liverpool and you're going to need to win eight of your nine games to win the title pretty much so it's going to be interesting but we'll be talking about that one tomorrow now julian timber has also been injured but he's been back in training for more than a month now i think uh but he didn't play the closed doors friendly that we played against um qpr last week but he played tommy also played but timber wasn't anywhere to be seen so what's the latest on him well according to reports on julian timber from chris whitley He's very close. He's hoping to be involved in one of the upcoming games. He could be named in the squad for Man City. It's always a possibility. He wasn't involved in the behind closed doors friendly against QPR over the international break. That only included Thomas Partey and Taki Hero Tommy Yasu. So he might make the bench for the Man City game, which again would be a huge, huge boost for us. Just, just imagine we go into that Man City game with Zinchenko back on the bench, Timba back on the bench, Tomiyasu back on the bench, Jesus back on the bench, Party back on the bench. Like all of our players are back pre uh, pretty much. And the ones that we thought were, might end up missing, Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel, all in the starting lineup again. So that would be huge for us. Um, that brings back our option of rotating players. You know, you can play Martinelli against Man City and then the Luton game, he played Trossard or vice versa. You could have Timba starting, give Ben White a rest for one game. You could have Tomiyasu starting, give Kivio um, um, a break for one game because players like Kivio played 120 minutes for Poland. They went all the way to penalties, so he got a little bit tired during the international break. You need to give those uh, those players a break. So you want everyone to be fit up until the end of the season. And if each one of them are fit, I think that's a fully fit squad because Simitra and Fabi are also back. So if all of them appear on the weekend, Timba... Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel, um, that, that means we have a fully fit team. I don't think we have anyone injured, which would be a huge boost going into the final two months of this season. So, Julian Timber, um, I still wouldn't expect him to see him play against Man City. It would be good to see him on the bench, but I still wouldn't expect him to play that game. But the Luton one, I'd not be surprised to see him coming on in that one, and um, I'm sure that we'll get a huge ovation. Um, it will be like a new signing, and um, he's missed a long time. That's um, since August, um, all the way until April. Yep, we, the, the fear that we had when he got that injury in August about him missing seven to nine months, it came true. He's missed a long, long time, but um, he's come back right um, on time, and hopefully between now and the end of the season, he can help us um, rotate more and pick up better results because the quality that are not better results like um keep picking up results between now and the end of the season bring that experience to the champions league and that different option in the champions league so huge huge news for us big news for us so that's a little in terms of the injury front let's go to the transfer news again we are we are going into april so the transfer news is hitting up um because um then when the transfer window opens up there's going to be a lot of movement and it's going to be an exciting summer for us so in terms of the um striker um front so tom canton says arsenal see the center forward position as a primary um for um, primary area of focus in the summer market Mikel Ata wants to take the center forward position to new heights next season that's actually the first time like we've had um those kind of um 
that kind of update regarding the striker position, like from an Ateta point of view, because um, he's really the first time he was really focused on getting defenders when he got Pablo Mari and Cedric and um, Gabriel in 2020. All those guys joined Arsenal, and then uh, we didn't really sign forward players until recently when he signed Jesus and stuff. But right now, it looks like we are really now going to take it to the next level in terms of finally getting um, you know, a striker that people have been asking for. I still, Jesus is very good, I still want him to stay, but he can be used in different positions up front left right side it gives us a lot and but people want a striker who's going to be you know in the box and um very clinical and all that 20 25 goal um a season striker that's what people um want so we are searching for a striker and it's going to be very exciting um there's more on that um he also goes on to say sources have um explained that the top young striker category is the parameter to which us will have narrowed their search for a new striker this summer so we're not just looking for a 30 year old striker or, or 20 old striker no we are looking for the kind of players we've been getting you know um all the players that we have the players that we've been signing you know Declan Rice um which is a player we signed recently Jury and Tim all those guys you know between the ages of 20 and 25 26 the most all of them are between those ages so we are looking at the striker who's going to be between that as well 20 to 25 and uh Biocares is the one that fits that um category Ivan Tony doesn't. Um, Osimhen is, I think, 25, so he's in and around there, so any of them could work. Watkins, I think, is slightly older than that. So we are looking for a striker between 20 and 25. So if we could get the the um, the Jokeris deal over the line, that would be great. Now, I've seen people, you know, being worried about him being a one-season wonder because we signed Pepe after having one good season. That could turn out to be true. That is always scary. And especially for that kind of money, 100 million, that is a little bit scary. But he also played really well for Coventry in the Championship, and that is another very tough league. From what I've seen um, um, from him, he is very, very good, not only in terms of scoring, but also in terms of, you know, the, the rest of the play in terms of assisting and, you know, combining with the other players, 14 assists for him this season. That is what the kind of striker Tsai is looking for. And if the striker can also get you 25 plus goals, <clears throat> That's 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 incredible. That's absolutely incredible. We talked about your craze um in the past video as well. Um Arsenal have made a sign signing a number nine, their priority as and a showing strong interest in your craze. It is believed your craze is now ahead of Ivan Tony on the Ghana shopping list after excelling in um Portugal this season. That's what that was according to Alex Crook a couple of days ago. So the striker search, we are definitely going to get a striker this summer. Most of you have been asking for it for two years. We are definitely going to get one this summer. And the fact that we score so many goals, if you add a strike on top of that, things would be absolutely exciting. We are also looking for a winger, and um, this is the latest news in terms of um, that. Um, from Charles Watts, Nico Williams is understood to be high on Arsenal's transfer list. Now, we talked about him again uh, a few times already the past um, one month. Uh, we are linked to him. He's a winger. Um, he plays for Bilbao. He plays next to his brother uh, in that team, but it's him that we want. He plays for Spain as well. Um, recently, um, during the international break, I think I watched him playing against was the first game or the second game. Or oh, was it a Bilbao game? I'm sure I've watched him the last two weeks. I did watch him. I think it was for Spain. I think it was for Spain against, was it Brazil or someone? I watched him in one of those games. And it does look very, very good. Um, the pace, he can play on the left side, on the right side. He can, you know, help Martinelli and Saka on both sides. Mainly, we want him to help Saka because the Martinelli side has players like Trossard and Jesus and all that. We, we want someone to help out Sack. And if you have someone like Nico Williams to help out in terms of that, that would be absolutely um, huge. And Fabrizio um, Romano also said something about him, but let's go to Charles Watts first. Uh, my understanding is that Arsenal are looking for a player who can operate in the wide positions, but I would be surprised if Daniel uh, Malin is a genuine option. What I do know is that they have a long-standing interest in Pedro Neto, while Nico Williams is also understood to be high up on their list of potential targets. I see players like those um too well ahead of Marlin in the pecking order when it comes to the sum. So let, let's start first start with Neto. Um Neto already concluded that no, 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 no. Too many injuries. He's picked up another injury that is going to keep him out for the rest of the season. I was giving him the last chance, the benefit of the doubt, to see how he's doing, how he does between February and um, the end of the season. But he's picked up another injury, and you don't want another injury-prone player. You already have too many of them. You don't want to add another one. So Marlin is another one who's been linked to Arsenal. He plays for Dortmund right now. He can play wing and also forward positions. Um, but Nico Williams is one that definitely interests me, um, depending on how much he's going to be. But I think he would be a good signing. And once again, he fits our age bracket in terms of the kind of signings we're trying 
trying to make, that would be an absolutely exciting sign. Like if you go and buy players like Yoko Rez and Nico Williams, the competition adds up in your team and other teams take notice of you, like if you sign um, such kind of players. So it's going to be exciting. And the Fabrizio one has disappeared. I don't know why it's gone, but I don't want to just quote um, something that is not on screen for you guys. Um, so that's let's on the wing as such, though. Um, Neto, um, Nico Williams, Marlin, for me, Nico Williams is the one that I'll be looking um, I'm looking forward to um, signing. I'd really happy if you get someone like a Nico Williams. Now, we have um, Fabrizio's thoughts on Jorginho, though. Um, Jorginho, um, his contract is expiring very, very soon. So what's the latest on him? Well, according to Fabrizio, um, and okay, Fabrizio quoting Jorginho's agent, who will discuss with Arsenal about his contract being due in um, to expire in June. It's our priority. Arsenal have um, have a fantastic group, and we will see if they need for next need him for next season. Returning to Italy, why not? One day, maybe. He told uh, Radio Sportivo. So um, we've still not yet um, approached him in terms of a new contract. Let's read this one first as well. Um, Jorginho's agent had this to say: He wants to win Euro 2024 with Italy. His contract with Arsenal expires in June and they have not called us to extend as of now. We'll talk soon. If he doesn't stay, he could return to Syria. Now, again, this is another player I made my um, like my decision on him already. I want him to stay for another year. He's given us a lot this season. He's put up so many man of the match um, performances against the big teams as well in games like against Liverpool and stuff. He's been really, really good for us. You can see the leadership. He's one of the few players that have played in the Champions League before. Uh, one of the few players that has won the big tournaments before the Champions League, the Euros. So bringing that experience to the team. And you can see the way, you know, every time they do those videos when he's around all the other players, you can tell like he's a big factor in our team. So I wouldn't want to lose in this summer transfer for a window because if you lose Jorginho and you lose part and then all of a sudden again you're looking for two three midfielders and Jorginho is one that can allow you to you know get one midfielder and use that money for a striker and also a winger um if you get rid of Jorginho then you all of a sudden need to get um another midfielder again and the fact that he came to us all on a very very um small fee that also uh, benefits us a lot. Like it's a cheap, um, cheap buy, and um, we're not really paying him that much money per week as well. So I don't think it's uh, worth it getting rid of him and getting another player who's going to get paid two hundred and fifty thousand per week. So I'm sure we will offer him a new contract. It's going to be up to him whether he wants to stay or not. But I'm sure he'd want to stay for at least one more year. He's been in London for a long time now since he was at Chelsea. So I don't. He'd want to go back home, yes. But um, I don't think he'd have a problem with staying um, back um, in England for a couple of more years. So for me, I'd give him a new contract for sure. Beareth. Beareth has been out on loan, um, I think, three times um, over the last three years. There's a time, um, if you don't know Beareth, by the way, is a um, young striker who we signed from Fulham in 2021. And in 2021, between 2021 and 2022, maybe middle or something, I used to do watch alongs so for the under 23 games and I used to watch him and Balagan playing every single week. He was absolutely incredible. There's a season him and Balagan absolutely demolished every single team in that under 23 competition. They were scoring every single week, assisting every single week, but he never quite made the breakthrough and the first team just like um, Balagan. He's been out on loan, so this is the latest update on him. Um, Storm Grass wants to sign Arsenal striker Mika Beareth on a permanent deal this summer, but are likely to face competition for his signature. Beareth will have just one year left on his contract, on his Arsenal contract, um, come this summer. So, uh, Beareth, um, I, I don't necessarily think he's going to end up being an Arsenal player. Uh, this is another one that I feel like he's going to go out on another loan deal or get sold or, you know, stuff like that. And the article says, um, let me re read part of the article for you. Um, Arsenal striker Beareth standing um, form for Stumgrass has led to the Austrian club wanting to sign him permanently this summer. Beareth joined Stumgrass on loan in January and has scored eight goals in 11 games. That is um, quite impressive. Stumgrass would love to keep the 21-year-old beyond this season, but they are likely to face competition for his signature. They go on to say how um, we bought him from Fulham in 2021. Uh, Beard was a prolific striker, goal scorer for Fulham under 18, scoring 21 goals in 21 games. Um, he has struggled for opportunities at Arsenal, they also say. Beard will have just one year left on his contract at Arsenal come the summer, and his fine form will um, will have caught the eye of other clubs around Europe. The frontman has been at Arsenal since 2021 when they signed him from um, Fulham. Um, oh, also, they're going to say, Stonegrass is the third club Beareth has joined on loan since joining Arsenal following his teams at Dutch club RKC and also Motherwell in um, Scotland. So, look, this is one of the players that um, if you can get money for him and use that money elsewhere, why not? He's 21 years of age. 
I'd still want to see him like in a national shirt for even a season to see how he does, but um, I don't think you're going to um, see that, especially if uh, we are going for a big name strike and a big name winger. These are one of the few players that you can sell him and Lokonga and um, Karen Tierney and Ramsdale. If you sell all of those players, all of a sudden you have enough money to spend like in at least two other positions. And um, I think that could be the case. But before we sell him, I think we might end up, you know, um, sending him on another loan or give him to Stum Grass again on another loan deal and see how he does. But um, a lot to get into today as well. I um, hope you... Um, uh, that's all the information that I needed today. Um, tomorrow, the preview. We'll be talking about the the Manchester Arsenal game this um this um this weekend. Tomorrow, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, as always, hit the like button. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch up with you on.